Hello, Facebook. It's me, Jeff, from the Science Spectrum. But I'm not at the Science Spectrum. I am casting to you from beautiful, scenic, my apartment. Um, and I want to share with you a couple of tools that you can use to learn about space. Space is one of my very favorite things. We already talked briefly about Stellarium, a free program. So uh, let's actually, let's start with another such program, Celestia. Uh, the URL over here is, uh, oh, hey, there I am in the background. What's up, Jeff? Uh, we're looking at Celestia.space. And uh, this is basically, this is a tool that we use at the museum that you can use at home that's so super easy to download. I'm going to do that while I'm making this video. Okay, so you hit the download button, it detects what kind of stuff it needs to do. Um, and then with your parents' pre pre parents' permission, you can click this button that, or the other button, depending on what works for your computer. Um, and you'll be able to download the program. It's uh, free, it's all open source, it's all stuff that um, you can use to explore the planets, you can explore orbits, you can explore, well, a lot of stuff. Um, and I do encourage you to go in and um, play with it, and that's going to be the best way that you learn already. I've downloaded it over here. Boopy doop. This is the ask your parents for permission dialog box. Um, it gives you a wizard, you click through, you do accept the agreement because you've totally read all of it already. Um, bloop, bloop, bloop. Pretty straightforward. A lot of stuff that I'm clicking through quickly is stuff that you and your grown-ups may want to check to make sure the specifications are right for your computer, but um, if you just click through quickly, it may even work. So it gives you a little bit of information, stuff about how to control the program and what it's used for and all that stuff. Um, but really the best way to learn this or any other kind of program is just to jump in there and play. Um, here we are on this beautiful home planet of yours, Yarth. Um, and we could jump to another planet. Let's say um, my personal favorite, Mars, the red planet, so called because it's red. Um, yeah, like I said, play along, play around with it. Uh, it's free for download as long as your grown-ups say it's okay. Uh, but you've also been looking at screens a lot lately. Probably a lot of glowing rectangles have entered your life. So I'm going to show you another thing you can do um, from the comfort of your own home that requires no electricity. Uh, you can make an entire map of the solar system. And I'm going to leave this on here real quick and do a slow pan so you can go back and pause the video when you need to. Um, but basically, we're going to be using a very long strip of paper, uh, and we're going to make a scale model of the solar system. Now, uh, you may not have a very long strip of paper already. If not, uh, you can make your own. Uh, use a piece of paper that is not a long strip, and just kind of cut. Um, honestly, if you cut a piece of paper into fourths, uh, it'll be long enough to overlap a little bit and you can have a very long strip of paper. Um, but uh, once you have your very long strip of paper, oh, this is going to be fun to do one-handed while I'm filming. This is great. Um, you want to take that one strip of paper and fold it in half, thusly. Uh, and always make a very strong crease, the fold that we make at any fold. Uh, you can run your fingers along it. I'm a big fan of the thumbnail. And now, when we open it up, hey, there's a line in the middle. And that line, we will mark. Bloop. Um, that's actually, that's where Uranus goes, but I'm not going to write it out. All right, uh, next we're going to do the back side of the universe. We're going to take that right end and fold it into the line we've just made. Boom. And in so doing, we make another planet and another planet's orbits. Um, this is going to be uh, Neptune way back here. But hold on. There are only eight planets, as anybody who's educated knows, um, and Neptune is the last one. So what's all the way out here? Why, I'm so glad you asked. It's the Kuiper Belt. 
There were previously some rumors of planets out there, but we know there are dwarf planets and stuff. But basically, this is the edge of our solar system, the Kuiper Belt, the the where Pluto was. It's fine. Um, so we got Pluto, we've got Neptune, we've got Uranus. Uh, next, we need Saturn. So we're going to take the left side and bring it into there. And again, fold it and crease it. And that's our next planet's orbit, which is Saturn. Uh, which we put it right there. Oh, look, it's got rings. My art knows no bounds. Um, but we got Saturn, we got Uranus, we got Neptune, and well, we need our next gas giant, which is going to be found by bringing this fold into the left here. And now we have Jupiter, big planet, red spot. Um, so we have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and the Kuiper Belt, uh, which means that our four rocky inner core planets are all in this little area here. Uh, so you might be wondering where exactly they are, and I'm so glad you are, because we can fold that left side in to where Jupiter is now. And that is Mars. And then we fold it in one and two times. Boom. And that will give us our final three of Earth, Venus, and Mercury. Itty bitty tiny planets. And then the big, big ones. So yeah, this is a scale model of the solar system. Uh, now, it's not 100% entirely to scale, obviously. Um, if I were drawing things to scale, I probably wouldn't be able to draw Mercury, Venus, Earth, or Mars, uh, and Jupiter would be bigger than the stage. But distances between planets are proportional. So Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are all really, really super duper close to each other over here. You've got Jupiter and Saturn starting to stretch out, and then you've got Uranus stretch, and then we've got uh, Neptune, and then finally way off in the vast expanse of space, the Kuiper Belt. Um, so yeah quick little scale way to put the solar system in your pocket um, explore uh, Celestia Celestia dot space is the name of that and hopefully it'll be in the description here there's my dog there's Artemis say hello Artemis uh, she's named after the moon missions that we're currently undertaking because uh, she's so smart and so sweet uh, and she is female as are some of the astronauts on the Artemis moon missions um, so I've got I think that's everything was there anything else you wanted a lot of times I have a lab assistant. Right now I have a shepherd assistant. Oh, she didn't like that joke. That's okay. Um, stay safe. Wash your hands. Goodbye. Good to see you. I don't know how to turn this off.